I'm Drew Scanlon. I'm exploring the world through the lens of games, and I'm doing it with the support of people like you on Patreon. Help us out at patreon.com slash clothmap. Video games often task us with waging war. But sometimes you get a game like this war of mine that focuses not on the belligerence of a conflict, but on those left in its wake. The game involves balancing the needs of a group of survivors trapped in a war zone. This can mean searching for supplies in houses that are sometimes still occupied, spending precious time and materials to make improvements to your shelter, and deciding whether it's worth it to help neighboring survivors. When I first played the game, I was intrigued by its unique approach, but what made it unforgettable was learning that it was based on a real event, the Siege of Sarajevo during the Bosnian War. The Bosnian War was a complicated three-sided conflict between Bosnia, Serbia, and Croatia. During the Cold War, the countries were all a part of Yugoslavia, a socialist state that, amazingly, had good relations with the USSR and the West. Damir is the founder of a gaming magazine and conference in the region called Reboot, and explained what it was like to live in Yugoslavia. Yugoslavia, while being a socialist country, was actually not behind the Iron Curtain. And actually Yugoslavia was a gateway of various uh, computers to countries behind the Iron Curtain because it was socialist. It was easier to smuggle through Yugoslavia to all of them. So we were basically the gateway for, for video games to a lot of countries behind the Iron Curtain. So that, that's, that's a cool thing. And like, in the 80s in Yugoslavia, you even, you even had radio stations which were at a certain point, they would say, like, okay, now turn on the cassette recorder, and you would, like, turn it to the record, and they would just start playing the codes of the games on the air. You would just record the whole damn set of games, took the cassette, and just play it. Because at that time, like, the, the market in Yugoslavia was completely illegal. Like, games were not officially sold at, sold at stores. Everything was basically black market, like, pirated games. What did it sound like when they were translating? Uh, super weird, like, like pings and pongs. Not like modem, but completely weird. Okay, so you would record yeah, on then, a tape recorder and then put that same tape into a, yeah, and the, play, the yeah, reader yeah, and yeah, play yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah that, that's like better than the internet. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, the good times didn't last. After years of growing tension, Slovenia and Croatia seceded from Yugoslavia in 1991 sparking a brief but brutal conflict. A year later, Bosnia tried, but Serbs within Bosnia boycotted the independence referendum, and with the support of the Serbian government, laid siege to Bosnia's capital, Sarajevo, for nearly four years. Today, Sarajevo is a bustling modern city, but it still shows scars from the war. These monuments, known as Sarajevo Roses, are craters from artillery strikes filled with resin. They are reminders of a past all too present for the citizens of the city. To get a first-hand perspective, we hired a guide named Zio who lived through the siege. I was 25 when the war started, and I was working for Red Cross, helping them to do the best they can help to people in Sarajevo because I am a pacifist, something like that. I speak a, a little Russian, a little German, a little English, and they need somebody like me. And I was actually lucky because it was a chance to meet people in every side, Serbs, Croats, Muslims. War was good education for me. As Yugoslavia fractured, it did so along lines of national identity intertwined with religion. Most of Serbia is Orthodox Christian, Croatia is mostly Catholic, and Bosnia largely Muslim. Sarajevo, however, has long been a melting pot, exemplifying the Yugoslavian ideal of brotherhood and unity. Sarajevo was always a uh, small Yugoslavia. 
43,000 mixed marriages existed. 85,000 Catholics, 150,000 Serbs, 200,000 Muslims, 3,000 Jews, 60,000 people declare Yugoslavians. It was center of rock and roll. Happy people. Olympic Games happened in Sarajevo. Only communist winter games in the history. The 84 Winter Olympics are a source of pride even today for the small city of less than 300,000. Sarajevo's surrounding slopes hosted many of the events, including downhill skiing and the bobsled. Mount Enigman ski jumps, okay. and here Mount Trebevich bobsled. One mile exactly long from start to down. But this is a fascinating place, especially because it's a ruin. <laughs> this was really incredible, expensive project. We were proud. Yugoslavia was proud with this. And today, nothing. Sarajevo's natural geography, however, also made the city easy to surround. Artillery position from the last war. This was hotel, first privatized hotel in ex-Yugoslavia and become a headquarter for the Serbian forces during the war. This is first NATO target in September 1st, 95, when they started airstrikes. Imagine how easy it was to control and to shoot Sarajevo. Huh? The juxtaposition was hard to fathom. For two weeks, the world came here to play games together. Seven years later, the world watched as the Olympic city burned. Life during the siege was hard. Joe runs a video game shop in Sarajevo and lived through the siege as a kid. Because of the war, I was expected to grow up way faster, you know. In five years, I grew up 15. In thought, in what, what's, what, what does it count, what doesn't count, what, what's it like to be hungry, what it's like to don't have electricity, water, and stuff like that, you know. I appreciate life more because of the war. I constantly say that, even though I did have a shit childhood, but I wouldn't change it. It made me up to a guy that I am right now. But it, it was a shitty thing. I mean, people died and you know, everything. You know. yeah. Yeah. Probably not able to play a lot of games at that time. You'd be surprised. We have like uh, from the batteries from the buses, you know, and you have a guy who's, uh, who's on Dinama and you run it and he pedals in and charges it and you can play for an hour or two Prince of Persia, old, old school. 286, 386, yeah. Really? Yeah. It was still gaming. <laughs> You have to get electricity somehow. And we, we, there's like, during the war, there was like certain buildings that were like primary and they had electricity, like some sort of like, I don't know, like uh, infirmary and they had electricity all the time. And we were like climbing on the poles and stealing electricity to have games to play or anything. Wow. Yeah, crazy. <laughs> Were there, did you play cards or board games as well? No, board games, I, I played cards. I'm, I'm, I love board games, but nobody loved board games here. I was always into Dungeons and Dragons and stuff like that. Yeah, I, lo I love those, yeah. So what, what other things would you do for fun during the war? <laughs> there isn't much fun to do. We were like collecting shrapnels from all sorts of grenades and stuff like that, bullets. That's like, I, I have like uh, mortar, grenade, part, T80, do you have T90 and stuff like that. You know, we're like exchanging bullets. Oh, I got a like a, from the anti-aircraft gun. Look at it, how big it is. Oh, I'm going to give you my, I mean, it's, it's like kind of normal, but it's not normal. When you see it from afar, it's not normal, but that's what you got. You don't, ha you don't have like stickers, you don't have cards, you don't have, you have shrapnels all over the place. The crazier the shrapnels, the better you have it, yeah. I mean, children. Certainly the past is present on many minds here. The recent past of the war, and the more distant, pleasant past of brotherhood and unity. This is where the country's most popular football club plays. Here too, the Olympic rings adorn the stadium, a reminder of its part in the opening ceremony. I was here February 8th, 1984. I was there, inside. I just finished a catering and tourism school and I cleaned the stadium a few days before opening ceremony and I deserve ticket. 
And I was happy to see Kirk Douglas, Swedish princess, black people. I said, my city is the best in the world. It's happened here. And this stadium and this ceremony create me as a tourist guide. That's the reason I like this place. It's easy to focus on the past, on what's been lost. But we can also remember the survivors and the hope they represent. The effects of the past persist, but as we'll see in the coming videos, more and more in the region are focused on the future. Hello, welcome to Sarajevo! <laughs> Cloth Map is possible only because of our supporters on Patreon. If you liked this video and want to keep seeing more like it, we'd love to have you with us.